Yes, it is true that the COVID-19 pandemic has affected business all over the world, most especially the travel and tourism industry. But Motel and Gov Resort is not an exception. Now that the hotels are open, we are also ready to receive our guests. At the entrance of our hotel, our security has been equipped to receive the guests. We'll check your temperature, we'll give you an hand sanitizer to make sure that you are ready to enter the premises of the hotel. At the main entrance of the hotel, through to the reception, we have two points where guests can sanitize their hands and get their temperature checked. We have changed our check-in process. The receptionist behind a glass shield will do your check-in process. We ensure that all our staff are all kitted with their face masks and our kitchen staff all have their hand gloves while they are preparing each meal. Our guests have their meals delivered by our staff in their rooms. This is to ensure that we do not have so much contact with, with guests at any point in time. process is also not left out. The way we clean our rooms and disinfect our rooms has also taken a new look to ensure that our guests are safe as they come in here. We are getting our hotel COVID-19 compliance, but we will continue to ensure that our guests get the best services from arrival to departure of their stay. As we open our operations, we invite you to come and do business with us. My name is Brian Effa, General Manager Ibo Motel and Golf Resorts. Our staff are staying safe. You too. Okay, thank you. Um, you know, we have to do this on a Thursday instead of our usual Friday while we're having the rehearsal for Aquaba tomorrow with our international. So we don't want to have too many things. But this is our first uh, uh, major research that we'll be talking to. If you notice in the 12 weeks of uh, Seven Wonders, the Zoom we had, people were talking about different locations in Nigeria. We selected 20 that everybody uh, talked about. And of the 20, the three most popular um, is Obudu, Ibom, and uh, Kajuru. And the exciting thing about these three resorts is that the people who voted or who nominated these resorts are from different parts of the country. We have people from Abuja, we have people from Lagos, we have people from that all participate in these nominations. So one of the top three is a bomb resort. And today we want to visit the bomb. We want to know what they have to offer. We know, want to know what they have done and what they need to do in the next six months because domestic tourism in Nigeria is real, is happening. So we will want to call on board the general manager of Ibom Resort, Mr. Brian, to join us. Uh, Mr. Brian, can you join us? Unmute your phone. Mr. Brown. Yeah, good morning. Okay. Oh, good 
Yeah, afternoon. Yeah, but, uh, please, can you introduce yourself? Let's know you. We saw the video. You are wearing jacket. Let's know you properly. So keep talking. Tell us who you are <laughs> and why you are here today. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, uh, my brother Ikechi. Uh, my name is Brian Efa. I'm the general manager of Ibo Motel and Gov Resorts. Incidentally, I'm from Akwa Ibom State. And I've been in the be working in this resort for the past two years and six months as general manager. Okay, let me ask you. Yeah, so that's it. Let me ask you, why is Bomb Ibom Resort very popular? We don't see you advertise, we don't see anything. So why is Ibom? Why was it very popular among the travel professionals? All right, not that we do not uh, advertise. We can't hear you. We can't hear you. Is it mistake? Aside from that, yes. Uh, Ibo Motel is, is a wonderful piece of uh, not just, and uh, I like to call it a wonderful piece of hard work, art work, because uh, the architecture is, is one in town, and the land space, it is situated about 178 square, I mean, uh, 28 hectares of land, is what this resort. connection that is um, quite a lot of high, very high profile organizations have hosted uh, a lot of uh, international um, non-governmental organizations donor agencies government offices and have also you know um, been a very safe and clean place to stay so that is why Ibo Motel is very, very, very popular in the scheme of things. Yeah, okay. Uh, for people who want to come to Ibo, the top operators want to package. And uh, I remember we tried to arrange a package uh, sometime last two weeks. And we were told your hotel is full. How is it possible that your hotel is full at this time of the year when other hotels are empty? What, what, what's the real story? Yes, uh, I think um, uh, obviously uh, management and style plays a very good role in, in things like this. Uh, you see, for instance, um, uh, our dream, when I took over as uh, the general manager six months ago, I discovered that for the past six years, the hotel has been running on uh, between 35 and 40 uh, percent occupancy all year round. And when I looked at that, that was not enough for the hotel to break even. So what I did was to look at my sales team, did a wonderful sales um, program for the sales team, especially with regards to uh, this time that we have uh, the coronavirus and pandemic uh, kind of stuff. So I had to re-engineer my team. So once that was done, we went to the market and we also showed that this, um, uh, we, we, we also started marketing our uh, safety uh, procedure that we have. And that attracted a lot of international companies, organizations that want their staff to be safe want their staff to, um, to be kept in places that will make them to be healthy. And so the markets are there coming. And as I'm talking to you, we are under very serious pressure. Uh, some are even, um, you know, uh, threatening legal actions for canceling their reservation because the hotel is very full. And everybody, uh, you know, in some of the things, uh, um, some of the, um, you know, papers have delivered online in most of the hospitality programs. And uh, it has been identified that what people look for in this uh, period is safety and hygiene. And that is what Ibo Motel is doing at this time. And I want to tell people that 
I like to tell people that the safest place to stay in Aquarium State right now is the Bomb Hotel. And we have become an example to a lot of hotels, a lot of, even the government is using us to train other hospitality providers to know how they can keep their, their guests safe. So for us, everybody that comes to Aquarium wants to stay in Ibo Motel, and that is how we have maintained, you know, uh, a very high occupancy of about 80 percent uh, occupancy for the past three months. Yeah, 80 percent is a heavy number, and you have uh, what they call pleasant problems. Other hotels will want to be caught, want to catch the same disease so that they can fill up their rooms. If I may understand you, uh, you were able to raise some level of safety pro procedures. You, you communicated this with your clients and you went ahead to prove that you can implement it. Was there any pricing mechanism or promotion that you did? Because we want other people to learn. We want our hotels full. As if the hotels are okay, tourism will get back to good health. So uh, the, after the three things, uh, put in place a good safety protocol, communicate it effectively with your clients and implement what was agreed uh, and promote effectively. So did you have anything like a, a pricing mechanism that helped you to be able to get 80%? When some years back, when there was no corona, you were doing 30, you were doing 40. What was this magic? Was there any pricing that, uh, you, that you introduced that made the difference? Yeah, uh, incidentally, uh, Ikechi, uh, we, uh, uh, we uh, actually increase our rates. We increase our, our rates uh, for all segments. And so there was no way we, we, we didn't, uh, of course, reduce uh, rates. We increased them because it cost us a whole lot to ensure that the... the to ensure that to ensure that the um, uh, the place is safe. For instance, when we each time a guest leaves the house, I mean leaves the room, we what we do is that we we fumigate that room, we we, dec we decontaminate it, and then each guest that checks into our into our hotel gets a sanitizer, gets um, an antibacterial wipe, and gets a nose mask. And we did not just stop there. We documented it in a video. If you have the video, you can play for us. We documented it in a video and sent it to all our guests and in all our uh, media platform, in terms of Twitter, all the social media platform. We send them there so that people can see exactly what we are doing. And of course, in revenue management, by the time the, the, um, the, uh, uh, the patronage is high, we need to manage it with our rates. So this is what is helping us, basically. So there was really no magic that we did in terms of rate reduction, rather, mm -hmm. because it costs us a lot more. We have to do some marginal increase in our, in our rate structure. So uh, those wishing to come to our hotel will see that our rate structure has actually, I think it's another video, not this one. There's another video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I sent you two videos. It should be the other one. So you use that, that other one shows you exactly, specifically on hygiene. That is what that okay. video is targeted. We'll, and by we'll that, we put the social media, boom, everybody. We'll, we'll yes. take the video so people can see what you did. Then we'll go through it because we want other hotels in Nigeria to learn. So what you did right. So we are going to play that other video. Then we'll come back to you. Thank you.
uh, I've seen that, and this is wonderful. Uh, WTTC and UNWTO, and a lot of people are trying to prove that uh, some destinations are safe. Some are marketing saver tourism logos and the rest of them. But you did it yourself. You decided to convince people that you're safe. And not only did you do that, you communicated effectively with all your clients. Your clients believed you and they came and they got the business. And you are able to actually increase when other people are decreasing their pricing. That is amazing. I hope that we hear such stories from other uh, hotels. But I, I, I have a question, which I know some of the journalists will have questions for you later, but let me ask my own. Uh, Ebom Hotel, well, Ebom Resort was uh, a former international chain uh, hotel. Then when chains leave, Revenue profile of the particular hotels suffer. That's why we hire chains. But for you, a popular international hotel chain uh, left Uyo, and you guys took over, and you have been able to increase occupancy and revenue. How was it possible that you could reposition within a very short time? You want to share some of that with us? Yeah, sure, sure. You get you. Um... You see, by the time uh, we came in, uh, the the brand left 31st December 2017 and uh, 18. And as an investment advisor in the, in this uh, uh, sector, I looked at the books. I discovered that the last time this resort made profit was in 2014. And consistently from 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017, the resort was dying on a downward growth. Revenue was, occupancy was low, revenue was low, and losses was very high. The hotel couldn't meet its obligations to staff, obligations to government, the owners. When I studied this thing, I ask myself, what is the problem? Why is this resort not having the required returns? And then we went back to book. And one of the things that happened was that some of the old staff that were here, you know, uh, convinced me. Hello, are you still there? I'm here, I'm here. I'm here, go ahead. I can see you. No, no, but my screen is blank. Are you there? Yeah, yes, I the am first thing that we, Yes, the first thing that we need to do is to budget consistently, is to consciously budget intentionally for growth. And then we had our marketing strategy, you know, to reach out to a lot more people. We did social media, we collaborated, and then, you know, also promoted our, uh, uh, what, what are the things that we're doing, you know, we, we now brought uh, back the confidence. And of course, when the big brand left, what they told us was that this hotel won't survive the next six months. And we took up that challenge, revived the entire system, you know, invested. So since we, that we have not done profit, and for 20, for 2020, this is even the year we have done the highest profit that we have ever, highest monthly profit. And of course, also looked at another single thing that was also hitting the finances was energy. There was almost zero energy conservation policy. We had to introduce that. 
And when we introduced that, in the very first year, 2018, we saved 100 million from energy costs. And the rest is history. Yeah, that, that, that's amazing. That's amazing that in the most challenging year was the first year time you're making profit since 2014. Nobody will believe that, that such a wonderful property with an international chain was losing money. So I, I commend you guys, and I see that the income profile has changed. And if I may ask you, which is your best month in the last one year? Which month do you, can we say is the most uh, successful so far? All right, usually, uh, since we came in, the best month is usually, um, you know, uh, our best month uh, is usually the last quarter, Sept uh, from the ember month, September, October, November, December. We always have a low period around June, um, June, July, and uh, very early September. So that has always been the, the trend. And then uh, January, February is low, and then March, April, we also pick up again, up to May. You know, so that's how the entire uh, calendar runs for us. But December is always our highest ever revenue uh, because at that time we have a lot of program for holiday makers. So we actually designed our December to promote domestic tourism. And we have a lot of families who could not travel. They come over here with their kids. And this place is always like a market square. It's like the biggest mall in Dubai. That's how it looks like in December. Throughout December, it's always like a market square. Everybody comes here to make their holiday, and it's always a time that we cash in very, very high. Okay. Before I, I, I go to about your own experience, how is it possible that an international chain was there and was losing money, and uh, a Nigerian takes over the same big hotel and they are making money. That runs contrary to the narrative that Nigerians cannot run hotels profitably. So whoever you and your team are, you need commendations. And uh, I don't know what you guys did. So that brings me to the question is, where are you coming from? Why, how are you able to achieve this when the story is that Nigerians can't run big hotels well. We've never had a Nigerian who is a gem of a chain hotel, except uh, the man for Golden Tulip in uh, Podakot, the, the man that died uh, last year. So how is it possible that you are able to make profit when a, an international chain lost money? Where are you coming from? What experience do you have in hotel? So if you know, maybe in your okay. touch, Okay, yes. Um, thank you very much. Um, I am, I am, I will, I used to, I will, uh, most of my friends call me Mr. Hospitality. And I've been in this, this industry from the one has been me, and I've been in this industry. And by the grace of God, it's my 15th year in this industry. Um, apart from that, we have also gone to schools that these people also go to. And as a matter of fact, I, I first started my career in Calabar uh, during the Randuk era where, you know, tourism uh, was at its peak in that state. And then with that spirit, we moved on. And incidentally, uh, I've been, um, I have so much emotional connection to this uh, very property because I was part of the team that opened the hotel in 2007. And then I left to Lagos to also be part of the team that opened the Southern Sun in Nikoi and was there as assistant financial controller running, you know, excellent service and making his profit in that very place. Aside from that, I, I have um, a certificate in hotel management from Wellfield College of Hospitality, a certificate from, uh, you know, uh, financial management from hotel school, the egg 
in the Netherlands. And I, for this place, I joined it directly from Harvard Business School, where I studied business, and also studied, you know, the case study of a lot of more than 50 hotels in this country, in the world. I did a case study of how they failed, how they succeeded, and other businesses, you know, how they succeeded. So when I came in, I joined directly from Harvard Business School in 2018. And when I came in with all that of passions and training that we had, I had to put in to, to play in this property. And with a lot of passions and the desire to change the narrative. And that we did, and that we succeeded. And of course, in several meetings of the State Executive Council, the owners of the hotel, they have commended the hotel for having done very well, you know, very well in, um, having done very well in this, uh, uh, in the little period that we have been here. And again, also, I've also um, spent a lot of years advising investors in the country on how best to position their hotels and how best to make profits, uh, uh, returns on their investments. And again, another thing that we did was that I want to go a little bit um, technical was that when I look at the return on investment and when that was decomposed, I discovered that the return on asset itself was very bad because the asset was very poorly utilized, underutilized. And that was why we went on the campaign to say, no, this hotel cannot be making profit or making money running on less than 45% occupancy. And that was what changed the game. Okay. I'm impressed with that. That shows that it wasn't a fluke. There was a background that led to this. You're, you're a unique story that I want Nigerians to understand. That an international hotel chain ran a hotel in Nigeria and was losing money. A Nigerian took over and started making money. That is something nobody will believe. People will tell you it's not true. If you are building a hotel in Nigeria, the first thing to do is to look for uh, an international brand. That's how we start in Nigeria. Even me, that's what I recommend. Oh, we have 150 rooms, get an international brand. Because we think, or maybe because it's about a quiet we think it's not possible to give a free hand to a Nigerian to run a hotel. It's not possible for the Nigerian not to be a crook. It's not possible for the Nigerian not to deliver value. And you have done that. So you are a success story. And uh, I'm proud of what you've achieved for Aquaibo. So operators have questions. Your hotel is full. We want to come to you. Why I, did, I was happy when you agreed to talk to us is that I've been putting up this uh, trip. Madam Shalom told us about the islands, 38 islands. We've seen so many things about beaches. Now we want to go. So how are we able to work together with your hotel? The two operators that are on now, how do we, is it possible to give us rates? I've stayed in what, some of your chalets. They are out of this world. I don't know if it's chalet or what you call it. Those buildings, not beautiful places. And what we can do, is it possible that we have an arrangement with you? and your hotel so that we can do packages and sample your products and why we go to do yeah, that challenge. So, yeah, so let us know what plans do you have for us? All right, so um, this year we introduced the tour package for tour operators. This was no longer, this was not, uh, was not part of our rest structure in time past, but we had to introduce it because as a key stakeholder in this industry, I have to harness all possible avenue of making my occupancy remain high. So we introduced various packages for, for, um, for our top operators. And then we divided them into, into three categories, the diamond, gold, and silver. That was how, that's how we categorize our top operators. For those in the silver category are those that are doing just four rooms 
and above, but less than 50 rooms. And uh, once you have done, uh, you, you have done 50 rooms and above, you become the gold partner. And then if you are doing 100 room nights in a year, all these things are what we call about in a year, you become our diamond partner. So depending on what category you fall, based on your performance, you also determine your rate. It's not a flat rate because we have to also reward um, excellence for, we have to also reward those who have worked so hard with us. So for the diamond uh, partners, these are the people that have the lowest rates ever. I don't want to disclose the rates. Um, for the benefit of our store operators, and then we also have the those for, uh, followed by those that have the um, the gold uh, rates. I mean the gold category, and those for the silver will pay higher. So I want to invite all the operators to to send us letters. We will collaborate and we will show you all of these conditions that qualifies you. But by and large, you are you are paying far less. When I say far less, far less than our rag rate, far less than our lowest rate ever. And that is because we recognize the importance of tour operators. And then we want to make sure that these people also benefit and grow within the industry. Yeah, if there's an email, you can say it so that, uh, though we'll send it later, but if there's an email, you can say it so that they know, so they can, a lot of them want to do packages. Now a bomb air flies everywhere as a complimentary service. So we can do packages with you, with the Bob Air, and with some of the top operators. So can you say their email address where they can send to? All right, my email address is Brian, B-R-I-A-N dot E-F-A at E-B-O-M, I-B-O-M, E-B-O-M Golf. G O L F Resort R E S O R T dot com Brian dot F R at Ibom Brian dot F R at Ibom Golf Resort dot com. So you type it. Okay, my people will, will run the Good. email address Brian dot F R at uh, ibomgolfresorts.com. Okay. Uh, yes. The other question I want to ask is, in Uyo, we've heard about fantastic roads, we've heard about all these things, but what else can we see in Uyo when we come? We know about the other places. Do you do complimentary packages from your, where we can see why we are in Uyo? Yeah, definitely. Um, uh, we have what we call discovery work. Uh, this is a complimentary service within the, the, or the resorts. And this is very heartbreaking. I mean, um, it takes a lot of energy to walk through some historical parts in the resorts. And, uh, and our tour guide, Ime, does that so fantastically well. And one thing you will see in this resort is a boat, a slave trade boat. This boat was excavated from the water at the marina angle of the resort. There were two of them. We sent one of them to Calabar and we placed one of them here. That boat is over a hundred years and was done, was manufactured in London. Incidentally, we trace the manufacturer in London. Now, uh, when I took over, this boat is just lying, is just lying right um, by the sea. So what I have done, or what we are doing right now, is to, you know, put a little to uh, really build a shade on the uh, boat, paint it, and then write a little description on that boat. Now we also have, you go through what we call the signature holes. We have a 18 old um, golf. Uh, golf course. So yeah, we are going to take you to what we call the signature hole. The signature hole, you stand on a mountain and sit down in a valley. And from that hill, 
you oversee the Itu Bridge heading on the way to Calabar. And then you also see the harbor that was used by, you know, angel eventies of those days to bring in uh, consignment from Calabar and Oron and uh, from Europe and all of that. So the, go the, the resort itself is a wonderful masterpiece that you can spend more than two hours walking around the 178 hectares of land. Okay, thank you. I know. Also, okay, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, and, and, and of course, also in the city, you can look at the, uh, the you can go to quite a number of places uh, to see. You can go to the Lollogard house, you can go to the bunker, the underground where the slaves were kept. You can see um, where the Aba women riot actually started. And then you can also see some of the places like the Maris Lazarus in Ibiono. You can see the actual Maris Lazarus in Ibiono and a lot more. And of course, if you look at our marina, our marina house, uh, someone once commented that this is the old residency in Calabar. I said, no, it's not the old residency in Calabar. This is actually uh, the oldest building in the resort that was there since the time of the colonial masters. So these are some of the things that um, you can see in Akwai Bomb State. Okay, some of the journalists have questions. So we are going to take the first one. Uh, Emeka Anoku, Elder, are you there? Raise your hand. Then, okay, Emeka, Emeka, go ahead. Um, I'd like to... Good afternoon, uh, listeners. I'd like to uh, commend Brian Effa for the effort you have put in to turn around the, the fortunes of uh, Ebom, Ebom Golf Resort in Uyo. You've done well. Uh, and it's, I think it's, it's coming from a rich background, a rich experience in hospitality. But I want to find out from you. When you were talking, you said um, the season that is very favorable to a bomb uh, resort is um, September to December. Uh, and so far, um, you spent a lot of money renovating the, the resort. Uh, in concrete terms, how much have you put into that place? And then how did you source the money? Is it from government or from private pockets in turning well, around um... the fortunes of uh, a bomb resort? Uh, because the, the uh, because of the economy, so how have you been able to raise such money to turn around that big edifice into a profit making uh, outfit now? Okay, so um, uh, first of all, uh, when we came in in um, 2018, there were a few uh, um, critical infrastructure that had issues. One was the cooling system and the power system, which was provided by government. But aside from that, we other smaller, soft issues, like the circulation pumps, the, the laundry, a lot of other things, you know, within the system that you cannot see from outside. And those ones, we tackle them within our resources, within what we get. So because we were actually doing well in terms of turnover, we were able to get some funding from our internally generated revenue to fix those things. Like if you come to the hotel today, you would think you are seeing a new property. All this was done within internally generated revenue, not a dime from the government or other invest investors. So that's how um, what we've been doing. We, you know, the fact is that we, we were committed to ensuring that our guests have the best experience when they stay here. So once there is commitment, I don't think there's any mountain that is uh, too high to climb. Okay, Dozier, can you now give your question? Dozier, Africa Traveler. On mute. Hello. Yeah, go ahead. 
good afternoon, everyone. Um, good afternoon, Brian. I can see you had you had an amazing work at the Bombay Resort. Um, I haven't been to that resort yet, which is a shame. Uh, but I've had a lot of beautiful stories from that end of um a problem state. I have a couple of questions though. Actually, one question. Um, um obviously we are in a pandemic, COVID-19 pandemic, and um what is the highlighted has been a what they do in terms of safety and um, um safety and um safety measures in terms of um, how to prevent the spread of COVID-19 in your facility. But I'd like to know, um, apart from, besides COVID-19 pandemic, what is your highest selling point or your strongest selling point? What is it that whenever someone comes in from the resort, they keep coming back and come back? So what keeps bringing them back? Is it the, the location of the resort or the features of the resort or pricing or your staff? Why do they keep coming back? What's your, your strongest selling point? Of course, uh, starting with the with the very experienced staff that are very fantastic, and I think we are one of the very few uh, independent hotels that has a full fledged training department, full fledged training department with a training manager who conducts continuous training for our staff, and even for this pandemic, training is like every month we are refreshing on how to take care of yourself and of course your guest. Now, our selling point, first is the space, the natural environment, the vegetation, the golf course, you know, the sports arena, and you know, the quiet nature of the resort. These are the few things that is our unique selling point. If you want to host safely 1,000 people and more than 2,000 cars in this environment, you will get it without any stress. Now, and then if you want to play, if you want to sleep and play, I mean, at the point we, 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 we started a promo that, called, that uh, we call sleep and play, you can sleep and play golf. You can sleep and play football. You can you can sleep and play lawn tennis. You can play, sleep and play table soccer and every other one. And we are planning to introduce an e-sports center because last year in 2018 in Ghana, we won the best sport hotel in West Africa. And we are developing that, um, that uh, potential to the fullest. Okay, um, thanks. Chooks one from the Guardian. Chooks, you can unmute your phone. Chooks. Can we hear from Chooks? Go ahead, we can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can, Chooks. Yes, I can. Okay. Okay, yeah, I'm saying that I've been following the conversation and I must say that I'm impressed with what I'm hearing. You know, because I've always said to myself that I, f I find it very disturbing that when a hotel is properly managed in Nigeria, it must be a South African or a Kenyan or someone from Zimbabwe. It must be someone from some country that comes to do it right. And I'm happy that I'm hearing from a Nigerian now and I'm, some of these stories gladdens my heart. Uh, that's, that's by the way. Then secondly is the fact that you talked about the occupancy you are having now. Although I could understand why, because your location in a time of pandemic is easier for people to stay in that hotel. Because it's, 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 I, I could target beautiful isolation because you are isolated. You are like in, a, in an environment where you are not really mixing up that much. So I can understand that some of the companies and some people want to be safe, who want to stay in your facility. But how did you do it that you are talking about 40% to the point that we don't have rooms to stay right now? What exactly did you do? How, how did it happen for you? Okay, um, you know, uh, when we went into the pandemic, 
uh, a lot of hotel managers went to sleep, but I did not. What I did was I brought my management together and we begin to think. And I kept telling them, I said, look, what, we, what you are paid to do is to think. And we form our own think tank. And what I told them was that let us look at the opportunity in the whole of this pandemic. Even when there was lockdown, people still traveled. They those on essential duties, they need to stay somewhere. The health workers, the government workers, and all of that, and even companies on essential duties, like the petroleum workers, they all need to travel. And I said, let us look at that opportunity. And as a result of that, we were the first to pull the video you are seeing, to tell the world that this is what we are doing to keep our place safe. And immediately we published that video, the whole thing went boom. And we even sent it to some of our contacts, the multinationals, the international organizations, the even, I mean, we hosted WHO here before, we sent to them and all of that. And when they saw exactly what we were doing, you know, that was exactly the point that we caught the market. You know, so it now becomes a fact that anybody that wants to come to a say, in fact, um, most organization wants to host their conferences here in the Bomb Hotel. And we are having big issues, you know, accommodating them because of that single strategy that we took. So that was what changed the entire dynamics. Because I saw the opportunity, I didn't see the problem. Yeah, thank you. That, 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 that was very, very nice. They always say never waste a good crisis. So you didn't waste this crisis. So I need to commend you on that. Now going forward, things are going to normalize. Uh, what are your plans in the next six months? Uh, is it a flash in a pan? Are we just seeing this now? How, what plans have you made to sustain this for the next six months? All right, uh, thank you, Kechi. Uh, for me, I am not thinking about the next six months. I'm not thinking about it because I have seen three good deals that makes my occupancy at 85% for the next six months. So that is not even where I'm destroying myself. But if you ask me, what is your future for Ibom Hotel? I will tell you that I want to change this hotel, not just to be called a hotel, but to be called a destination. So we want to develop our sport. Right behind me is a football signed by, by all the footballers of Nigerian football um, team, the Super Eagles. And when we had a conversation some time ago last year, the coach told us, if you develop your, your football team, I mean your football, uh, your training pitch, because the hotel itself is sponsoring a football club, Ibom Hotel FC, if you can upgrade it to a, uh, an international standard, we will make this place our camp. And many other teams would like to come. So we are already working on that. We have created the field and we are backfilling them to that standard. We want to create an all form of esports here. We also discover that in the whole of Aquaibom, there is no standard uh, children playground. We are also creating that to make sure that this place is a home for kids. Not talking about our cycling path, we have our cycling club and our cycling path has been clearly marked so that when you, even if you want to cycle, you want to, you want to swim or you want to take a walk, you can walk and, and, and do that exhaustively. What other things are we looking at? We are looking at redevelopment. Some, uh, since we are situated on a very huge expanse of land, we are thinking of developing a mixed use facility like what we have in a co hotel so that we can also cater for the low level. Uh, since we always host very high profile guests, and these guests come with their aides, come to their drivers, come to their orderlies, and all of that. So we are looking at that opportunity as another opportunity for us so that we can also house them. We do not miss any amount of money that comes into this place. So once you come in here, 
you are lost in fantasy and you are lost in excitement and all that. So we want to also keep the aids. We want to keep the drivers. We want to keep the orderlies here in, in, Aqua, in, in the resorts. We don't want them to go out. And because during December, we also used to have a huge number of kids coming in here uh, with their parents. We want to also, we are, we are looking at engaging uh, the, 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 um, the activity of experts to design for us a standard children playground. So with this, once you got into a bomb hotel, you will not exhaust the facility till evening. And of course, I would want to enjoy the class of uh, on the book class. I read. We want to segment the entire market so that even the poorest of the poor can have a segment of the hotel to enjoy himself. And that's what we are creating. So that we want to capture the entire market in this side of uh, the country. Okay, thank you. Uh, we I first need to thank the Niger Seven Wonders group who nominated your hot, uh, your resorts. Uh, many of them uh, chose you, Obudu, Kajuru, and Ikogosi. And that's why we, we decided to do this focus. And uh, before now in October, we also have a, a, some other uh, focus. So I, I need to commend you. Everybody is proud of what you've done. You are a revelation to us. I still think, I thought it was a, a people that... Uh, those people that were still running Ibom. So I'm proud that the Nigerian has made a success story of an international hotel. So we take uh, Franklin Nihejirika and we'll soon be rounding up. Franklin, go ahead. Okay. Hello, can you, can you hear me? Yeah, can I yeah, hear, hear you? you. Franklin, go ahead. Hmm? Unmute yourself, Franklin. Yeah, Franklin, I can hear you. Hello, Mr. F, uh, can okay, you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure, I can hear you. Okay, I say in the time past, you used to organize um, some uh, hotel conferences in Lagos here. So now you are the you are in, in charge of uh, Ibom Resort. So how are you taking advantage of the um, uh, conferences? That's um, what is the, the the your offering for conferences, uh, event, and um, uh, exhibition? How are you taking advantage of that to reposition your hotel? All right. Um, Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Franklin. I think you are one of my very good um, media supporter. Uh, then we we thought of having that conference this year, as at last year uh, November the team was already set up, but unfortunately the pandemic has uh, killed a lot of things. However, um, uh, for us, I think there is how you we have a discussion with you, and then we will give you our hall for almost free. And of course, we have group packages uh, where you have from the group of, uh, if you have a group of 20 persons coming up, we also have a group packages that gives you a low rate uh, for you to come in. But uh, we also support quite a lot of um, this, uh, this kind of conferences that, has, that comes to our, our state. And one of, the, one of the businesses we do uh, I, I, one of our biggest my biggest market is actually conferences and exhibitions, and that we do very well. You know, I, I said earlier on that we have the facility to accommodate 1,000 people sitting in a round table. And then, of course, to quickly say here, yeah, of course, we have our golf tournament that was suspended uh, due to the pandemic that we'll be holding in December this year. So we also will send a proper invitation to, to all of you to... Uh, witness uh, that wonderful event. 
So thank you. Okay, uh, the journalists, on behalf of everybody, we want to come to you, we want to come and enjoy your results. So put us in your plan. That's somewhere along the line that will come and sample your products. We want to go to Obudu. We want to go to Kajuru. We want to come to Ibom Resorts. Uh, Nigeria is proud of you. You are the top three resorts in Nigeria. And when the foreigners start coming, quite a lot of them will come to you. But for you personally, you could see how everybody is talking about you. So we are impressed that at least the Nigerian has made us proud. You have proved that it's possible for a Nigerian to run an international hotel. So that is a shift in the narrative. I've been writing about hotels for a long time. And uh, the nearest we had at the co-hotel was Ms. Bode Thomas, who became, I think, a resident manager. And uh, we are happy to have uh, someone like you, a Nigerian, full-blooded Nigerian, trained in Nigeria, lived in Nigeria, though with uh, some exposure internationally, run a hotel and deliver results. So uh, Chichi, we have been sharing Brian's uh, contact here. So uh, you have to copy it, brian.epa at uh, Ibom Golf Resorts. Yeah, we've been sharing it, so you can copy it. So I, in the absence of any question, if you have something to say for what I have asked, that we want a farm trip, you can tell us now before we close, Brian. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Ikechi, uh, before I talk about the farm trip, because we did it last uh, in 2018, and we'll do it again in 2020. Um, you see, uh, Ikechi, uh, for me, uh, running these 163 uh, rooms on the, with 18 old golf course, a marina resort, uh, about five restaurants, a very clean pool, was one of my biggest challenges. And uh, for me, uh, I told myself, we need to demystify the meat that Nigerians cannot run it. And I took that on top, uh, that was the motivating factor Having worked with uh, a lot of expatriates in time past, and I asked myself, I said, I mean, we, we've gone to the same schools, we've had the same experiences, I mean, we can do it. And um, I needed to prove that fact that this can happen, and I'm glad with the kind of results uh, we are having right here. A farm trip will be um, definitely before Christmas, we will organize a farm trip for, for um, our very good friends. I think I've worked with a lot of them in time past, and I'm sure that we'll be able to have a, a lot of coverage, a, a better coverage for, for, for us here in, in Ibom Hotel. And we really want to place this uh, hotel on the, on the map in Nigeria so that everybody talks about this place and we'll continue to improve on the facilities. The hotel, the resort is, uh, uh, since it was open, is over 13 years now. And so we'll continue to improve on the, some of the uh, facilities that need to be touched. And of course, we believe that by the time you come here around November or December, we will be able okay. to- Okay, uh, thank you. To wow you in, in this country. You see the top operators want to be part of it, so they want to sample it. So this, uh, to, uh, the farm trip won't only be for the media, it should also involve uh, top operators. Uh, we have quite a lot of them on now. So we'll communicate with you. I thank you for uh, joining us today. We spent 12 weeks talking to top operators, travel agents, and a lot of them identified you and Obudu and Kajur as the top places. And you have come and you've answered our question. So we are going to sample the product. I thank you for joining us today. We'll be signing off soon. Uh, for the other people, we have our Aquaba conferences from Monday. The MICE is on Monday with the CEOs of South Africa Tourism, Rwanda Convention Bureau, um, Kenya Convention Bureau, Uganda Tourism Board, and Ghana Tourism Board. The lead speaker is the best mixed brain. He has done a hundred 
projects in Africa. And uh, he's going to be asking, teaching us about uh, uh, mice in Africa, Rick Taylor. Then we have the tourism minister of Seychelles, former minister who is running for presidency. He was going to be our guest speaker. So he's coming on on Monday by 2 p.m. Nigerian time, we'll have mice. Then on Tuesday, we'll be having the youth tourism thing. You know, the youth tourism at Aquaba is always an exciting panel with all of them shouting, excited. So that will be on Tuesday. So don't miss any of them. Uh, they have shared the, the link. So find out from us if you don't have it. We want as many people as possible to learn. You heard Brian talk about mice. Mice is a big business. Nigeria is not yet there. Ghana is leading in West Africa. Uh, Rwanda just overtook Kenya. Mice is big business. Leisure worked in the past. Business, tourism, and entertainment are leading now. Leisure is coming back with adventure because of COVID. So we, we want to say thank you for everybody. Is there somebody there with a question before we go? Okay. Uh, Mr. Brian, do you want to say something before we go? Hmm? Yes, uh, not, this was an opportunity. I needed to change the dynamics and demystify uh, the uh, wrong notion that Nigerians cannot do it. I want to encourage every other general manager that uh, are holding the same position that all you need is commitment and the passion to deliver. And once that is there, you will be able to deliver and uh, change, uh, join me in changing the dynamics for, for this industry. Because we want more and more of Nigerians running very big hotels with rooms and all of that. So thank you very much, uh, Ikechi. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for choosing Ibom Hotel as one of the uh, top resorts in Nigeria. And we are hoping that uh, part of the successes we have enjoyed is because you chose us and you talked about us and people are coming to see exactly what we are doing. So thank you very much, Ikechi. Yeah, thank you. Before I go, I need to say this. Uh, I've been doing quite a lot about hotels for the past 20 something years. In other countries, I have seen Ghanaians rise to run hotels. I have seen Kenyans rise to run hotels. Zimbabweans are all over the world. South African, just like Chuk said, we have Nigerians rise, stay as sales managers for like donkey years, director of finance if they allow them, but they never rise to the top. There seems to be a glass ceiling for Nigerians in hospitality. Even when Nigerians bring international hotel brands, they bring foreign managers. Uh, it's something about Nigeria. We need to change that mentality. A lot of people are going through hotel schools. Why are we not able to generate and grow general managers in Nigeria? So I'm happy at least we have a success story. And we hope that Brian uh, attracts other managers who tries to do what he has done so that the big hotels in Nigeria, we have Nigeria, then we can start exporting them. Hospitality is big. Why are we importing management? We are not able to export. We are exporting bank managers all over Africa. We are exporting telecom managers all over Africa. We have started exporting oil rig managers, oil managers. So why are we not able to export hotel management? I think, uh, Brian is the turning point for Nigeria, and we hope there will be many more added to that. So, Brian, thank you. And for Niger Seven Wonders team and everybody who was on today, we thank you. We'll, Monday, Tuesday, we'll have our, um, what's it called, uh, Aquaba uh, conferences. Then in October, we'll go back to our Friday weekly uh, conference. In partnership with Lagos State Government, September 27, World Tourism Day, there will be a hybrid conference. First, you can join us by Zoom, September 27. You'll get to know about that. So thank you. We are going to play uh, one video for you or two. One of Ibom, 
then one of uh, Niger Seven Wonders with beautiful music. So you dance and uh, <laughs> enjoy yourself. Thank you for joining us today. Ah uh -huh. 